Hi, uh, this is Chao Wei Huang. I am an interventional cardiologist at the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and at the Frederick Health Hospital. I specialize in treating heart attacks with balloons and stents. Today, we're going to talk about what a heart attack actually is and what to expect when you get to the hospital. Your heart is a muscle. Its job is to pump blood to supply nutrients and oxygen to the rest of your body. And like all muscles, the heart itself needs blood to work and that blood is supplied by blood vessels on the surface of the heart itself. These blood vessels are known as coronary arteries. There are three main coronary arteries. The left anterior descending artery feeds blood uh, to the front of the heart. The left circumflex artery feeds blood to the left side of the heart. And the right coronary artery uh, feeds blood to the right side and usually the back side of the heart. Together, uh, these coronary arteries supply the heart muscle with the blood it needs for energy to pump. The problem is atherosclerosis. Over time, uh, you can get buildup of cholesterol and fat inside the wall of the blood vessel. This buildup is known as plaque, and as the plaque gets worse, it starts blocking blood flow to the muscle of the heart. And you can start getting chest pain when you start exerting yourself. This chest pain is also known as angina. The development of atherosclerotic plaque can take many years or even decades but the one thing that can really speed it up is smoking. Smoking dramatically accelerates the buildup of plaque and severe plaque uh, can become weak and friable. And when that happens, the plaque can tear, rupture, and quickly form a blood clot. And that's when a heart attack happens. A heart attack happens when a plaque suddenly ruptures, literally breaking apart and splitting open. When this happens, your blood starts sticking to the sticky innards of the ruptured plaque, and a blood clot forms, which can quickly block off the blood vessel and stop blood flow to the heart muscle. This is a heart attack. This whole process can happen within seconds without warning. And when part of the heart muscle is cut off from its blood supply, it becomes stored for oxygen, and that heart muscle dies. This whole process is unpredictable. And as we get older, if we don't take care of ourselves, we can start building up a lot of plaque everywhere in the coronary arteries. And the scary thing is, any plaque can rupture, not just the most severe ones. Smokers tend to get the most plaque, and with more plaque, there are that many more chances for any one of them to rupture, so smokers get more heart attacks. And when a plaque ruptures and blocks off the blood vessel, it is a medical emergency. A heart attack is a medical emergency. Time is heart, and the more time you wait, the more heart muscle dies. What are the signs and symptoms of a heart attack? Most commonly, chest pain. Many patients describe it as a very heavy, squeezing, pressure sensation in the chest. But many people don't necessarily get chest pain. This is often the case for women and for diabetics. Sometimes you get left shoulder pain, arm pain, neck pain, jaw pain. You could feel short of breath. You could feel sweaty. You could be lightheaded or just very tired. You might feel nauseated or maybe like you're having a really bad case of heartburn. But if you're thinking that you might be having a heart attack, the most important thing to do is to call 911. I cannot emphasize this enough. Call 911. Do not drive yourself to the ER. Do not ask your spouse or friend to drive you. Call 911. If you're having a heart attack, delay is deadly. Many folks don't want to be a bother. They think this is just a bad heartburn or it'll pass, I'm healthy, I can't be having a heart attack or it's the middle of the night, I don't want to make a scene. No, patient delay is the number one cause of bad outcome. Get help, call 911. When EMS gets to your house, uh, they will quickly do an EKG. That EKG will be transmitted to the hospital, and if it looks like a heart attack, then a code heart, in other words, an all hands on deck signal will be sent. The interventional cardiologist uh, will be summoned from home. The cardiac cath lab will be alerted and will start rushing into the hospital. The ICU will be alerted. This all happens before you even get to the hospital. If you're having a big heart attack, uh, your heart can develop an, an electric short circuit and actually stop. This is known as a cardiac arrest. This is why you call 911. This is why you don't want to drive to the ER or ask your friend or family to drive you. 
If your heart stops, EMS can restart your heart with an electric shock. They can do chest compressions to maintain blood flow to your brain and vital organs while your heart restarts. And they can insert a breathing tube to help you uh, breathe. Once you get to the hospital, uh, there will be a lot of people working on you. A heart attack is an all hands on deck situation. Very quickly, uh, you'll get blood thinner medications. Remember, most heart attacks are caused by blood clots. You may get blood thinners uh, even if you already are on one. You may get oxygen and medications to help decrease the amount of work your heart has to do. And you may get some medications to help with the pain. And most importantly, you'll be very quickly rushed off to the cath lab where the team has to open up that blood vessel as quickly as possible. They have less than 90 minutes to do this. And the more time it takes, the more heart muscle dies. This is what a typical cardiac cath lab looks like. It looks like an operating room. It's usually very cold. There'll be an operating table in the middle of the room with big machines, equipment, and computers all around. There'll usually be four people in the room. The doctor and his assistant will be right next to you at the table. There'll be one or two nurses in the room to help you. You'll usually be awake during the procedure, but the nurse will give you sedation to keep you comfortable. And this is a pre-COVID photograph. These days, all of us will be wearing masks. Once you're sedated and relaxed, uh, the doctor will start the cardiac procedure. Most cardiac cath procedures these days are done through your right wrist, but sometimes we may still have to use your groin. The doctor will start by first uh, feeling for your pulse. He'll then give you a local anesthetic, just like the dentist. He'll then use a small hollow needle uh, to get into the blood vessel in your wrist. Once the hollow needle gets into the blood vessel, he'll thread a very thin wire into the blood vessel and then insert a sheath into the blood vessel. A sheath is basically a, a small plastic tube, generally less than an eighth of an inch in diameter. Inserting that sheath is usually the most uncomfortable part of the procedure. But once the sheath is in, all of the other tubes and medical equipment goes in through the sheath and you generally won't feel any more discomfort. The doctor will then thread a very long tube known as a catheter up your arm and into the heart. He'll manipulate the catheter so that it cannulates the coronary arteries. He'll then inject contrast dye to see the blood vessel using x-ray so that he can find the blockage that is causing your heart attack. And this is what this looks like. Uh, you see uh, the dark contrast traveling down the blood vessels of the heart, uh, the, the coronary arteries. The artery that happens to be occluded here is the left anterior descending artery, which is the blood vessel feeding the front of the heart. And this is where the occlusion is. It is right in the middle of the blood vessel. Blood is not getting by this blockage. And the part of the heart downstream from this blockage is not getting oxygen and is slowly dying. We have to open this up. So to open up the blood vessel, uh, we do a procedure called a percutaneous coronary intervention, or PCI, uh, for those in the business. The doctor will maneuver a very thin wire uh, into the blood vessel across the blockage. This wire will act like a rail over which he can slide a very small balloon to the blockage. He'll then inflate the balloon to squish out the blood clot and plaque against the wall of the blood vessel. He'll then take the balloon out and implant a stent into the blood vessel to keep the, blo uh, the bl uh, blockage open. A stent is basically a cylindrical metal scaffolding that is designed to prop the blood vessel open. These things are really very small, uh, usually at most around an eighth of an inch in diameter or, or less, and they come in various lengths. Most stents these days will be coated with a medication that reduces the chance that the blood vessel will clog back up. And this is what it looks like after the blood vessel was open and the stent has been placed. You see that blood flow was successfully restored to the left anterior descending artery. The lower part of the artery, which, uh, which was initially missing, is now back. Now, a heart attack will cause damage to your heart muscle and weaken your uh, heart's ability to pump blood. And the longer you wait, uh, the weaker your heart can become. On the left, uh, you see what a normal heart should look like. You'll see all the blood being pumped vigorously out of the heart. On the right, you see what happens uh, to the heart uh, after a heart attack.
that heart is struggling. Part of it isn't moving very well. It's not able to pump blood as well. Now, sometimes uh, this will get better with time. Uh, this is especially true if you were able to get to the hospital quickly and the blood vessel was opened up very quickly. But if you wait, a lot of that damage will be permanent. After a major heart attack, uh, you'll usually spend at least one night in the intensive care unit. Uh, they'll monitor you very closely for any complications. They'll draw your blood for cardiac markers to make sure you're getting better. You'll get an echocardiogram, which is basically an ultrasound of the heart to see how well your heart is squeezing. If you had a lot of heart muscle damage, uh, your doctor may have to support your heart with a cardiac pump that's usually placed uh, through your groin and you may need to be on a mechanical ventilator to help you breathe. Once you stabilize and get better, uh, you'll be moved to a cardiac telemetry unit, which is a step-down unit, where uh, you'll usually spend one night, and then you'll get to go home the following day. Most heart attack patients uh, are on at least five medications. Now remember that heart attacks are caused by blood clots, so you'll usually be on two blood thinning medications. Aspirin, a weak blood thinner, uh, will be your friend for life. And you'll be on the second blood thinner, uh, usually for at least a year. Uh, the second blood thinner is designed to keep platelets from sticking to the metal stent and forming a blood clot. You'll need it for a year because that's usually how long it takes for your blood vessel wall to heal around the stent. You'll also need uh, to be on a couple of medications to protect your heart. And these medications are also blood pressure medications but they do a lot more for your heart uh, than just lower the blood pressure. So even if your blood pressure is normal, you may still need these medications. You'll also need to be on cholesterol medications, known as statins. Again, statins do a lot more for heart attack patients than just lower cholesterol. So even if your cholesterol is normal, your doctor will still prescribe a statin for you. And you'll receive a referral for cardiac rehabilitation. This is very important and will help speed your way to recovery. Now, there are some risk factors for heart attacks that you can't do much about. Genetics, you were born with it, you can't do much about it, or menopause. But most risk factors you can most definitely change. Don't smoke, control your diabetes, lower your blood pressure and cholesterol, lose some weight, exercise. And most importantly, stop smoking. Let me say that again stop smoking. And in case that wasn't clear, stop smoking. Lower your risk, eat healthy. You know what that means, more greens, more fruit, less fat, less oil. Exercise every day, it doesn't have to be very strenuous, just a walk, keep moving. Lose a little weight, take your medications. And make sure that you see your friendly neighborhood cardiologist regularly because they'll make sure that you won't end up having to see your friendly neighborhood interventional cardiologist in the middle of the night. Thank you for watching.